In other words, in the entire Barbie movie, here's the crazy thing. There's not one drop of feminine empowerment. This is supposed to be the great feminine empowerment movie. There's zero empowerment. It's empowerment of women to have sex like a man, meaning I just have my vagina, but I don't need men, but I can have sex however and whenever I want. There's no need for there to be the universal love story. There's no need for there to be a relationship. I'm going to go back to being Dr. Lawyer, Nobel Prize winner. I'm going to go back to the real world. I'm going to embrace my humanity and my death. But why would I be in a relationship? That's actually exactly where it gets to. It does not get beyond that because that's where culture got. And this movie is, is talked, this movie is talked, it's supposed to be the great movie of feminine empowerment. There's not one second of feminine empowerment in this movie because feminine empowerment means you're empowered as a woman. To be empowered as a woman means, yes, I can be a doctor for sure. I can be a lawyer because men and women can both be doctors and lawyers. But I also want to be a lawyer, right, in a way that's not the way a man's a lawyer, right? I, I want to be just as good a lawyer, but I want to bring my feminine. What's my feminine? What does it mean to be a woman? Why is it that there actually are anatomical differences between men and women? There are hormonal differences between men and women. There's obviously body differences between men and women. I mean, the world did produce masculine and feminine. So I don't want to be a lawyer, doctor, Nobel Prize winner and give up my feminine. I want to integrate my feminine. So there's no feminine empowerment and there's no masculine empowerment. And what does it mean to be a man when I'm trying? And it's pathetic. The men are trying to do patriarchy without a job. I mean, you get how pathetic that image is? I mean, it's an, and basically it mocks men. There's not one good male hero in the movie. It's filled with women's heroes which is why it's, it's why people say this is feminine empowerment. So the heroes are all women, that's true, but there's no vision of feminine empowerment. Does everyone understand what that, I mean by that sentence? I mean, you've got women heroes, but they're not being feminine. They've just become men, right? But there's no integration. There's no new narrative of what it means to be the new woman. Who's the level three woman? So there's no level three woman and there's no level three man. The difference is, is that women still come out heroes, you get this? That in the movie, the women still are the heroes and the men are actually tragic and pathetic. There's not one image of a man in the movie. There's a, you, we get to the Mattel boardroom in the movie, right? And because she, in the real, in the real, in the movie, she goes to the real world and she goes to the Mattel, you know, big office building and they get to the, the office where all the board members, all the men, and it mocks all of the men. It's a terrible vision of men. These are the patriarchy guys and they're shallow and they're superficial and they're idiots, right? And there's this key woman in the movie, a woman and her daughter, they're the heroes, right? But, but and then we meet, we meet their husband at the end of the movie, he's an idiot, right? So, so here's, here's what we got. I want you to get where the movie goes. And we're gonna do like, you know, one more hour on this, something like that at the mystery school. And we'll decide what day Krista, and we'll, you know, in Shahati, and we'll send everyone a note, okay, if you want to come for the part two. But I want, but we, we got part one already, because it's such a big deal. So this is the major blockbuster hit, right? It takes us to level two men and women. And at level two, the woman is the hero, right? She's succeeded in being a man, but she hasn't embraced any new dimension of the feminine, even sexuality, she does like a man right? There's no new experience of feminine desire of feminine power. There's just feminine power being like a man. There's no vision of the masculine at all. There's no masculine heroes in the entire movie, which is exactly where we are in culture, right? Where the feminine is almost identified with the good, right? The feminine is identified with the good. The feminine has no shadow, right? She doesn't need a man. And the masculine is pathetic. He's trying to be patriarchy, without a job, essentially, right? This incredibly pathetic view of a man. And, and the one big action scene of men is men fighting with each other, where the women get the men to fight with each other, right? Because they can't get women, so they fight with each other. And there's this huge, hilarious battle scene between the men, where they're fighting with tennis rackets and you know this insane choreographed, very funny and very tragic and pathetic scene. So here's what I, I wanna invite friends, okay? 
I want to invite everyone to see the movie. Okay, I wouldn't come to the second one without seeing the movie. See the movie, and it's going to make such perfect sense. And then we'll go to the next level, and we're going to hit like a deeper view, but but really see Barbie. Okay, see Barbie and see Oppenheimer. And one more thing, just to be a little crazy. Who wants to be crazy here? Let's be crazy. We're doing the revolution. It's summer. We got to be a little crazy in the summer. The other movie we're going to cover, right, in the mystery school is Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, so so if I can give everybody, you know, and again, you can say like, Gaffney, give us an assignment, but why would we do it? So no one needs to do anything, but if you want to, right, and you'll have like a great week, see Barbie and Oppenheimer, but then see the three episodes of Guardians of the Galaxy, one, two, three. So the mystery school doesn't start till next Monday. So you got like nine days. We're not going to start the movies till probably Tuesday, Wednesday. So you got like 10 days to see five movies. That's not bad. Now, this is very, very important though. If you see the movie, popcorn, no dieting. Need popcorn, you don't need butter, but you totally need popcorn. You can't see a movie without popcorn. So blank the diet, forget about that. Get like a Diet Coke. I know it has aspartame, but just do it once, okay? Just one, Diet Coke, popcorn for each movie. Sit back, right? Get a couple of friends. If you're living by yourself, you can see it together. Watch it with someone on Zoom, right? Kick back and have five movie nights. Now, what you might want to do if you want to get really crazy about it. So I'm a little crazy. That's just, I apologize for that. But so I have this little thing on my, um, on my, here we go. On my, um, you know, that, that program on the computer, what's it called? What is it called? Here it is. You know, this program that's called, can you see it? Notes, this little notes program on the computer. So on my notes program, I have, how many notes do I have? I have 285 notes, okay? And my notes are whenever I'm kind of watching a movie or I'm like, I'm like I can be like walking down the street. I'll just take notes on what's around me, right? Just all the time. I'll just take like notes. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's, oh, there's a mother and child. But look at that interaction. Here's a psychological principle. So I'm, I'm crazy. So I've got, I've got, as I was watching with my little son, I was watching Oppenheimer and then on Barbie, I was kind of, I took like notes, like the whole movie. I just all through the movie. And of course, everyone in the theater got upset with me, turn that phone off. So I had to go to the back of the theater, not to light up the movie theater. So if you want to, right? But there's no, you have to have popcorn. You have to have something to drink. But if you want to also take notes. As you watch Oppenheimer, right? And as you watch, right? As you watch Barbie, take notes. Now, you guys have time for two more minutes? Who's got just two more minutes, okay? Two more minutes, just show of hands. Is that okay? Just, I promise, really just two more minutes. Because I did promise Oppenheimer and Barbie. So I'm not going to go into Oppenheimer now. I'm just going to say one thing. Just This is just a tease. This is a tease. Who is the goddess in the Oppenheimer movie? And it's who is she? Who's the goddess? There's a central figure who's the goddess in the Oppenheimer movie. And I'm going to already tell you who she is. And that's going to help you. I'm not going to say anything about it. The goddess is Jean Tatlock who's the communist woman that he has an affair with. It's the only nude scene happens twice in the movie. And it's actually one, it's a new way of doing a nude scene in a movie. It's actually done really elegantly and beautifully, right? But she's the goddess. And in the movie, the goddess commits suicide. So I want you to get this. You have to watch the movie knowing that she's the goddess. Jean Tatlock, who's a woman who was a communist, right, in the, in the 40s, right, who was very close to Oppenheimer, he had a, he wanted to marry her, she didn't want to, right, and so they kind of break up, he gets married, but he remains with her, and after, even after he started the atomic energy project at Los Alamos, she calls him, and he goes to be with her for a night, then he refuses to see her again, and she commits suicide, a very complex story, but it's very important, she's the goddess both in her beauty, and she's also the dark goddess, now stay close, friends, because in every tradition, you have what's called the dark goddess. So Kali, right? In Kashmir Shaivism and Hinduism, is both light and dark. She's complicated, right? The Shekhinah in Hebrew wisdom is both the Em Nora'ah, the terrible goddess, and the beautiful goddess. So she is Lilith. She's Lilith. She's a Lilith goddess. She's a very beautiful, Lilith is a complex figure right, which our beloved Jacqueline has studied deeply, right? So Lilith is this, this complex, deeply 
alive, deeply erotic, deeply intelligent, deeply sexual goddess, and the man can't quite hold her. And actually, stay close with me, Gene Tatlock gets Oppenheimer in an enormous amount of trouble. In other words, he loses in the end his security clearance in 1949 because an attempt to take him down after the atomic bomb in 1945 uses the Gene Tatlock story and her suicide and his visit to her. But you actually can't understand the movie and not one review, just not one review of Barbie gets even vaguely close. I looked at last night at 2 a.m., but like 20 reviews of Barbie and 20 reviews of Oppenheimer, and they are tragically the superficiality of culture. They're just jokes. And I, I apologize for being so harsh, but they're, they're so superficial and so pathetic and so tragic. Now, when I say these are the right readings of, of Oppenheimer and, and Barbie, which I am saying, I'm not saying that that was the conscious intention of the filmmakers, right? A movie becomes a text of public culture, which is a goddess text. This is Eros speaking. It doesn't matter what the filmmakers were, were, were thinking. <laughs>